All right, here we are, roadside rescue. We've got two new alternators. Whichever one it is, here's the car that's having those issues. So alternators tucked away up in there, but we'll go ahead, get the key out here and get digging into this. Way back, the car died a few times. The battery light came on. And so they replaced the battery and it kept happening. So they're pretty confident it's an alternator. We're gonna go test the alternator, but it's actually pretty intermittent. Um, so they actually made it all the way back to town without the car completely dying. But the battery light would come on, turn off, come on, turn off, killed the battery a few times. They had to jump it and then it would work. And so they made it here. They called me when they were about two hours out. And so uh, I've just been kind of on standby in case they couldn't make it all the way here. So they did make it here. We're gonna go pick up that alternator for their vehicle. It is a Chrysler 200. So it's got two different alternators. It could be two different amp alternators. So we've got both of those ordered in. Um, well, I called and just verified that I can get both. So I'm gonna bring both with me, figure out which one it is and uh, make sure it's that alternator. But again, it's intermittent. That battery light kept coming on. So uh, pretty sure we're probably gonna end up replacing that. They live two towns up. So we'll be there in about 20 minutes. We're gonna go pick up those alternators, head up there and uh, then we'll dig that alternator out from behind that passenger side wheel well. It's just tucked down on the side of the engine there. It looks like it should be pretty easy to drop that AC compressor and then just pull the alternator out through that hole. So we'll get up there. All right, here we are roadside rescue. We've got two new alternators, whichever one it is. Here's the car that's having those issues. So alternators tucked away up in there, but we'll go ahead, get the key out here and get digging into this. Okay, now luckily this is the four cylinder, so uh, quite a bit extra room in here. If it was a V6, then there'd be, <clears throat> it'd be a lot more cramped. So, okay, I've got the tension off this belt. I'm gonna... Okay, make sure we get a jack stand. Now we'll go ahead and remove this shroud here. Should be pretty simple. Looks like a 10 millimeter and some clips and some eight millimeters. Just get this all out of the way. I'll just probably take this whole piece off. Just remove our clips here. Okay, there's one fender. Okay, there's the other piece. If you set stuff on top of your tools, you'll lose them. Just a little word from the way. Now that we're under here, what we're gonna do is just take this AC compressor off. There should just be three bolts holding it in. One there, one there, and one up here. So, oh, here's the other one, there's three. So we will get this out. All we gotta do is drop it out of the way. I'm just gonna do the connector right now, just so I don't yank on that. And then I'll just remember to do that. But anyways, this will drop down. We can kind of just move it out of the way. And then this alternator will come out through this hole here. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and do this out real quick. All right, so now we've got that battery disconnected. Uh, now I've removed the cable off this alternator because you don't want this touching anything on the engine that's all grounded. 
And then uh, we'll go ahead and remove this bolt here. I think we're gonna have to remove this tensioner in front of it, but uh, those both should be pretty simple. So we'll scoot over there and get a look at that. All right, so we've got this uh, idler pulley off the front of that engine. And then uh, the belt looks like it's in fine shape. So I may not recommend that they need to get a new one, but I did bring one with me. And here's that last bolt. So that alternator should be able to just come right out of this gap, but I'll probably have to pry it loose from up top and set it down gently here. So let's see. And voila, here it is. Heavy son of a gun. All right, now, I have the code on the back here that tells me how many amps this is. Uh, they may be different too. So I've seen them before where different alternators put out different amps and they look the exact same. If that's the case, I'll probably just put the higher amp in here or uh, just look it up and see what these numbers mean. So. But I don't think there's any issues putting a higher amp one in there. But uh, maybe there is. Leave it down in the comments if you know of one. Maybe I'll do it on the next one after I get an answer. <laughs> All right, so after doing a comparison, here's our right alternator. We're going to go ahead and throw this back up in there, and we should be done pretty quick. So far, it's been about 30 minutes, 25, 30 minutes, and that was just giving everything a look over when we got here. So should go back together in about 15, 20 minutes, I'd say, and be good to go. All right, here's the new one back in there. I've gotten both bolts just set in place. So now we'll go ahead, tighten those down. We need to put that nut on the back there. But uh, here we go, we'll tighten them down. Okay, those are tightened up. We'll just get this power cable back on the alternator with its new nut. Because they always come with new nuts for whatever reason. I'm not complaining, but um, I guess maybe because sometimes the old units don't have the same thread pitch or whatever. So they can't just assume that you'll have the right nut for it when you're done. But, I like getting extra parts for my nuts and bolts bag. And you just want to make sure this cable can't spin when you pull on it. You don't want to like yank super hard again, but it doesn't spin. There's our protector. There's our plug and we'll push its safety back in. And then we'll go ahead and get this AC compressor back in place. Here's one of those things too, you don't want to tighten down anything all the way until you have all of them in. These are the ones that always bust my chops are these AC compressors. So I'll tighten one all the way down and get it in place and I can never get the other one started. So just start them all first and then tighten them down. But that's no secret. Now we'll just plug this AC compressor back in. All we have left is to route that belt back on, but again, that belt looks good. Oh, and this idler pulley, but both pretty simple. And the belt looks good, so I don't think I'm gonna recommend they replace it at this time. All right, so that belt's on. Now we'll just put these shrouds back on, these little fender liners, and uh, it'll be good to go. Okay, it's all tightened up, wheels back on, good to go. The only weird thing that happened was this had gotten, it was like a little shorted. It wasn't uh, tightened all the way since the battery's in this wheel well down here in the fender, you can actually see it. Uh, it's got the jump 
uh, spot up here, just where you can hook a cable up to that positive. Anyways, it wasn't all the way tight, so it had been shorting out and just got real hot, and it actually melted that plastic, uh, clip holding it off the frame. And uh, when I just went to tighten it down, it broke I, like it was nothing. So I just put a rubber glove around that to insulate it so it doesn't touch anything on the frame and short out. Here's the test. We'll make sure that battery light goes off, so. Oh, we're gonna have to jump it. Hey, we've got that jump box on. Here's the key. And there we go. No battery light, which is right here. So that's awesome. I'm Ernest, this is the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. If you thought the video was entertaining at all, consider subscribing. We'll see you on the next one. This is a job well done.